Hello everyone, and welcome back to Steam Code, and welcome to another episode of our AVR assembly tutorial series. In this video, we will be covering branch commands. So we already took a look at what branch commands are and what they do in a previous tutorial, but in this one, we'll be looking more specifically at a few branch commands and seeing exactly what they do. And this is not a comprehensive list. We will go over more in future videos, but this is just getting us started with looking at some more detailed branch commands. So I already have all of the code written here and you can write it down yourself as you go along or you can just watch me. And I will just step through this step by step explaining what each piece does and we'll show exactly how we're operating this, this code. So starting at the top, we're loading registers 16 and 17 with OF and DF respectively. So I'll just step past those and we can see them down here. R16 is OF, R17 is DF. Then we're adding these two numbers together and storing the result into R16. Now it's EE. And when we store that, we don't expect the carry flag to be checked to one because we didn't enable a carry or we didn't enact a carry. For carry flag to be enabled when you add two numbers together, the result needs to be larger than FF. And the result, as we can see here, is EE. So what this does, BRLO, it branches if the carry flag is set to 1. But since the carry flag has not been set to 1, it will just skip past it. So now we get down to BRSH. And what this does is it will branch if the carry flag is set to 0. Now, as we can see, since the carry flag in our status register is set to 0, not 1, then it'll branch back up to L1 and we can restart this process. So back up to L1, it'll add these two numbers again. And when it adds it, this time I'm expecting it to set that carry flag to one. So as you can see, when it adds those two numbers together, the result is CD, but with an extra carry because it's larger than FF. So now our carry flag has been set and this BRLO will branch down to L2. And that's what it did. So now let's try these BRHC and BRHS commands. So down here, we're loading R16 and R17 with 8 and 7 respectively. And then we're going to add them together. So here we see 8 and 7 and R16 and R17. Now when we're adding this, I'm expecting it to become OXOF because that's the equivalent of 15 in decimal. And as we can see, R16 has been set to OXOF. And so what this does, what these two branch commands do, is they branch if the half carry flag is set to zero or one. Now, if you don't know that what a half carry is, is it measures whether there's a carry, but only within half of the eight bits that are composed, that compose a hex number. So as we can see in this number, we have two hex digits, each of these hexadecimal digits, are, is composed of four bits. So when we add or when we compose, when we do an operation and it results in a carry being taken from the first four bits into the second four bits, that's when the half carry flag has been set. But since we added eight and seven together and we resulted in OXOF and there was no number in the second half of the hexadecimal, then our half carry flag is still set to zero. So what I expect this to do is go back to the top and then restart this process. So let's see what it does. As we can see, it goes back to L21 and then it's going to add R16 and 17 together again. Now, since R16 is OXOF and R17 is OX07, I expect the half carry flag to be enabled after this step because it the, the result is larger than O than 15 in decimal, which will result in a carry from the first four to the second four bits. So let's see what happens. As we can see, our result is OX16, and our half carry flag is enabled. So now it's gonna branch down to L3 when it reaches BRHS. All right, so now we're down to L3. So in this L3, we're going to be looking at BRGE and BRLT. Now what BRGE does is it branches if the sign flag is equal to zero. And BRLT branches if the sign flag is equal to one. Now, if you don't know what the sign flag is, what it is, is it's a flag 
that represents whether the number in the step above is positive or negative. And so remember in binary, you know whether a number is positive or negative if the most significant bit, otherwise known as the left hand bit, is one. If that number is one, then you know that the sign that the number is negative. If it's zero, then the number is positive. So in OXO2, what does that look like? OXO2 is 0000, zero, zero, zero and this is in binary, and then 0010. Zero, zero, zero. That's what OXO2 is in binary. And this number has a most significant bit of 0. So the sign of that bit will be, or the sign of the S, the S flag will be 0. So here we're loading it. We're loading it with OXO2. Let's go down to R16. We can see OXO2. We're going to decrement it. So now it becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then we're looking if our sign flag is equal to 0. So since the most significant bit is still 0, the sign flag should be 0, and it should bounce back up to L31. All right. Now that we're at 1, we're going to go back down, decrement R16 down to 0. Our sign flag is still zero because the number still starts with zero. Jump back up. Now we're gonna decrement it from zero all the way down to one, 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 one. And since the most significant bit of that number is one, then our sign flag should be set. So let's decrement it. As we can see, R16 has been set to FF, which is the same as one, 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 one. And our sign flag is enabled as well as our negative flag and as a result BRLT will branch down to L4 all right so we took a look at six different branch commands in the future we'll take a look at some more but I hope this has been a good overview of how these branch commands work and as always if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one